What's up? So glad that you're here tonight. I want to give a special shout out to any life groups who are meeting for the first time tonight. I'm so excited for the journey that you guys are about to take together. One of the big pieces of that journey is these videos, these teaching videos that your life group will watch together. And the cool thing about this is you're not just going to listen to me talk the whole time. We're going to break the time up with questions that come up on the screen. You guys will hit pause, answer those questions before we keep on going. So as you listen tonight, be paying attention, maybe even take notes. What stands out to you? What seems important? What are facts that might help you answer those questions when you get to your discussion times with your groups? Tonight, we are starting a two-part series on the church. And I'm so excited for this because if you're in a life group, there's a good chance that you've heard of the church before. And most of us have actually grown up going to church, but I'm willing to bet that most of us also don't really know what God means when he says the church. So we're going to look at what does God say the church is? What does the Bible tell us about the church? Who is the church? What is the church? What's our purpose as the church? And as we do that, we're going to get to see what God's design and purpose is for the church. And by doing that, we'll be able to know, hey, one, how do we know if we're doing church well? And what makes a good church that we can follow Jesus better and we can do it together. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Before we jump in, I want you guys to start the conversation talking together about when you hear the word church, what's the first thing that comes to mind? The church is more than just a building, it's a body. The church is more than just a building, it's a body. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear the word church, the first thing that pops into my mind is a small white building, maybe with a steeple on top with pews on the inside, the classic country church. Maybe you think about West Shore, a big building with lots of people and lots of activities and things to do and ministries. But I'm here to tell you that the church is not a building the church is a body. The church is people. The church is a gathering of people together. That's what makes up the church. The Greek word for church, ekklesia, actually means assembly or gathering. So that tells us that the church is not about the place. It's about the people. It's about the body of Christ. And as we go tonight and next week, we're going to talk about two expressions of the body of Christ. One is called the local church. And one is something called the universal church. And we'll talk about those two things. The local church is a local body of believers who meet together regularly to hear God's word and to practice the ordinances. That's just a fancy word for saying they take communion and they practice baptism. So the local church is believers from a similar area who gather in a physical place to hear God's word, to take communion, and to do baptism together. That's the local church. But did you know that the local church is actually a smaller expression of something much bigger called the universal church? The universal church is everyone who believes in Jesus across time and space united together as the body of Christ. That's the universal church. The universal church is all of Christ's followers across time and space and history who are united together because we are the body of Christ. So when we come to church on Sunday, we gather together with a local church. That's an expression, an outpouring, a small glimpse of the universal church. When we break bread together, when we worship, when we come together, we're getting a glimpse of the true unity of the universal church, of God's people, Jesus' body across time and space united together. So we're going to spend our time tonight talking about the universal church. What does it mean that we are the body of Christ, the church? Have some questions for you guys on the screen, and we'll be back to answer those and discuss in just a second.
universal church. It's not a what, it's a who. It's not a place, it's a people. And if you've put your faith in Jesus, it's not someone else, it's you. The universal church is all of God's followers across time and space. If we look at Ephesians 5, 25, we see Paul giving instructions for how husbands are to love their wives. And to do that, he makes a comparison between husbands and wives and Christ and the church. He calls the church the bride of Christ. Ephesians 5, 25 says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So the first thing we see in this about Jesus and how he is affectionate for and what work he does towards the church is that he gave himself up for us. Jesus gave himself up for the church. That means that the people who make up the church are the ones who have received the gift that he's offering. The people who make up the church, the universal church, are the people who put their faith in Jesus' death and resurrection for their salvation, who've accepted this work that he's done. That's who make up the body of Christ. That's who make up the church. The next thing we see as we keep reading in this passage in verses 26 and 27, it says that he gave himself up for the church, his bride, so that he could wash her with water, that he could sanctify her, that he could present the church holy and blameless to himself. What that means is that Christ's first goal is to save us, to give himself up for us so that we could be the church. But he doesn't stop there. His next thing is to sanctify us, that he wants us to grow to be more and more like him. Sanctification, as we put away our sin and we follow Jesus, he wants us to be more and more like him. And the church is the way he does that. He died so that we could be his body and so that he could sanctify us, his bride. So we see Christ ministering to the church in saving us and calling us his bride, his body, and by sanctifying us and pushing us more and more towards him. The people who make up the church are the people who put their faith in Jesus. And the purpose of the church is that those people would grow in being more and more like Jesus and accomplish his purposes here in the world. What that means is it's totally possible for you to walk into a church but not be part of the church. It's totally possible for you to go into a church building but not be part of the church body if you haven't surrendered your heart to Jesus. So the church is those people who've given their lives to Jesus. The church is the people of God, saved by the power of God for the purposes of God. Let me say that again. The church is the people of God, saved by the power of God for the purposes of God. And we're united together across time and space as his body. Ephesians uh, 2, 4 to 6 says this, But God, being rich in mercy because of the love with which he loved us, made us alive together in Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do you hear that? That he, Jesus, has raised us up with him and we are seated in the heavenly places. This is a spiritual reality. If you put your faith in Jesus, you are right now seated in the heavenly places with Christ. This is a spiritual reality. It may not yet be our physical reality, but this is our spiritual reality. And because of that, you are united across time and space with everyone who's followed Jesus. Because we are all together, seated with Christ, united by his blood as his body in the heavenly places. We are connected across time and space through Jesus with everyone who has ever put their faith and ever will put their faith in Christ Jesus. The amazing thing about this, when I think about it, is when we think about worship. When we are worshiping together, we're not just singing praises with the local church around us, singing praises to God, but we are joining in the praises of the universal church. We are joining our praises with Moses and Abraham and all those who have gone before us and who are yet to come, who are now worshiping Jesus together. We join them in praising Jesus, not just the local church, but the universal church together as Jesus' body and his bride. We get to worship with the saints because we unite together. We're all seated in the heavenly places together. And one day that'll also be our physical reality as well when Jesus comes back. This is what it means to be part of the universal church. The universal church is the people of God saved by the power of God for the purposes of God. 
want you guys to look at that passage together and we'll come back and talk about how the church is the body of Christ and what that means for us. So you've heard me say a couple times tonight that the church is the body of Christ. I want to look quick. What does it mean that we, the universal church, are the body of Christ? And to do that, I want to look at Colossians 1, 17 to 18. It says this, And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He's the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, then everything. He might be preeminent. The church is not just a building. The church is a body. And what does a body do? A body follows the head. If I'm going to move, what moves first? My head. The body follows the head. Wherever I want to go, the head goes first. The body accomplishes the will of the head. So when we are the body of Christ, the church, that means we are to follow where Christ is going. We are to follow where Christ wants to go. We're receiving our instruction from him and we are to be the hands and feet of Jesus, the church. We're not just a building. We are a body. We are the church. We're the hands and feet of Christ. And so when we think about the church as a body, it means that we exist to follow Jesus, to follow his lead as he gives us strength and power and insight and to be his hands and feet to accomplish his purposes here together as the universal church, his body. What that means for us is that there's two questions. One, are you part of the church? Have you given your heart to Jesus? Are you really part of the universal church? Or do you just go to church because your family does? Or if you are part of the church, are you living like it? Are you living as the hands and feet of Jesus and accomplishing his purposes for us? Are you following the head of the church, Jesus? There's some questions for you guys to think about together. Discuss those with your group. we got a couple more as well to wrap up the night. But let me leave you with this, that you, if you were following Jesus, are part of the universal church. Believers across time and space who are followers of Jesus, his body. The people of God, saved by the power of God, for the purposes of God. And as such, you have responsibility to live that out as his body, the church. So let's do that together. We'll see you guys later. Have a good night.